have you been to the mountains yet? Not yet. It's going to be a wow. It's going to be a wow. On the East Coast, in New Brunswick, in the Bay of Fundy, there's uh, Hopewell Rocks. If anyone here has an opportunity or has seen it, pretty cool. It's, uh, these rock formations are shaped into flower pot formation. And that's from the, the tides washing away the base so that the level of the water washes away the rock so that what's not touched by the water is still a fairly substantial mass. So it's basically a mass kind of balanced on, on, a, on a pillar. And uh, they're like 45 to 75 feet high. And in this area, in the Bay of Fundy, just the way it's, it's shaped, when the tides come in, they come in 45 to 55 feet high, depending on where you're at. And, and, and that happens every, so the tides come in every 8, 12 hours. So that's like, they come in, six hours later, they go out. Then it'll come in. So in six hours, you've got um, a, a distance of 45 feet. It comes just like that. Really, it does, because there's signs when you go down there, they're saying, um, they're warning people not to hang out too long, because they've, they've had to go and rescue folks, because they get stuck out there. It comes so fast. That's magnificent. It's, wow. Doreen reminded me of our time when we went to Drumheller for Passion Play. Anyone who's gone there knows that the, the setting is magnificent. It's a natural stage setting. You're sitting in these um, benches, kind, kind of like a, a, a theater, um, kind of like a, in a theater, basic outdoor theater. Um, the one presentation we saw at the end of the presentation, um, out on the ridge, folks in white sheets, angels, were presenting themselves. All of a sudden, they're all over the place. Not just the line, but they're here, and then one's perched over here, one's here. There's quite a few of them. Very impactful. And then, at, at one point, they show their glory to God, to Christ, and they raise their arms, and then there are these sheets that are draped. So basically, they're this, it, it's like a large mass. So it's really quite a neat experience to see that, the majesty of that, which got me to thinking about some verses, which I'd like to share with you. So I'm going to go to Hebrews 1, 1 to 4. In the past, God spoke to our ancestors through the prophets at many times and in various ways. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by his Son, whom he appointed heir of all things, and through whom also he made the universe. By the way, I don't know if I said that. Chapter 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, I think. Uh, the sun is the radiance of God's glory and the exact representation of his being, sustaining all things by his powerful word. After he had provided purification for sins, he sat at the right hand of the majesty in heaven. So he became as much superior to the angels as the name he has inherited is superior to theirs. Then let's go to Hebrews 10. Verse 5 to 18. Therefore, then, when Christ came into the world, he said, sacrifice and, offering you did not, sacrifice and offering you did not desire, but a body you prepared for me. With burnt offerings and sin offerings, you were not pleased. Then I said, here I am. It is written about me in the scroll. I have come to you to do your will, my God. First, he said, sacrifices and offerings, burnt offerings and sin offerings, you did not desire, nor, did you, nor were you pleased with them, though they were offered in accordance with the law. Then he said, here I am, I have come to do your will. He sets aside the first to establish the second, and by that will we have been made holy through the sacrifice of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. 
Day after day, every priest stands and performs his religious duties. Again and again, he offers the same sacrifices, which can never take away sins. But when this priest had offered for all time one sacrifice for sins, he sat down at the right hand of God. And since that time, he wants for his enemies to be made his footstool. For by one sacrifice he has made perfect forever those who are being made holy. The Holy Spirit also testifies to us about this. First he says, this is the covenant I will make with you. After that time, says the Lord, I will put your laws in your hearts and I will write them on their minds. Then he adds, their sins and the lawless acts I will remember no more. And where these have been forgiven, sacrifice for sin is no longer necessary. When I had that image of the angels on those ridges, and then with their arms outstretched and their, and their white sheets just draping over them, that, that was powerful. But in here it says that Jesus is above that. Can you imagine how awesome that would look? How that awesome that is? I, uh, my mom watches Forensic Files. I'm not too sure why she got hooked on that. But basically it's these episodes that they talk about these uh, um, um, crimes that happened and how Forensic had solved them. And one of the episodes talks about um, a child uh, being murdered. And you know it's funny how, I mean, murder is, is horrible in any way, shape, or form, but when it comes to be a child, I don't know, it, it, it bites the heart a little more. For me anyways, and I'm sure for many of you. Many times I come here when I do the Lord's table, and uh, my heart is bitten. And may, maybe it's because of the innocence of Jesus when he goes to the cross. But I have to, I have to remember, it's bigger than that. After what we just read, and after imagining how Jesus looks above what the angels looked on that ridge in that play, he's magnificent. He is powerful. He is seated at the right hand, waiting for us. I have to remember that. I have to focus on that. And he got there because he went to the cross. If he didn't go to the cross, he wouldn't be there waiting for us. This is a time here to remember what he's done for us. A time where we share the emblems of the bread and the grape juice to remember what he's done and what he's shed for us. I'm going to say a prayer here, and then after that, if we can uh, do both emblems, uh, I won't do the prayer in between, just to give you guys a heads up. Let's go to God in prayer. Dear God, you are such an awesome, awesome God. We thank you so much for your son that you gave to us, bringing him down to earth, as a man and he died on the cross for us this is a time for us to remember that dear God although as Christians we think of this quite often this is a time now right now where we come collectively to remember this and dear God we can sense your heart swelling when we come together to focus on you and your son in appreciation and dear God help us to do what we must do on our side of the contract on how we should live how we should present ourselves how we should learn more about you and your son and dear God, help us to be courageous 
after recognizing that our sins are gone and are forgotten. And if we can accept that, we can move forward. And dear God, with realizing what Christ went through as a man being tortured um, and, and where he's at now, if we realize our ultimate space, place and what we need to do, uh, help us be courageous in what people say about us, if it's negative, how they treat us, if it's abusive, because we are Christians. Let us be strong. Dear God, again, help us to uh, praise your name, show your son's name, show our love to those around us when we leave this building. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.